I am taking so much space to like make this these videos is actually kinda of crazy. How oh What's the point in this? Wait, let me know. Alright. I feel like there was a way past this. It. I'm just an idiot. I'm gonna combine clips though after this. And then delete clips, of course. Yeah, stuff like that. Because I know how Share Factory works and everything, I. And, oh. Man, it's like how I felt after like one day we're trying to wait for her behind the wheel. And so I was looking at a tree and being like, hmm. I know what I can do. But bye bye. Probably something might have in there if I should do. Oh, let's go. Going back to the creepy art. Oh. He told me about Bruna's father and brother, but I was already very ill. The light had returned. That helps a lot. thing made me suffer even more. It was my world. And it was crumbling. When I spoke to Bruna about it, she turned her head away and was silent for a long time. Oh, wow. That's... Prince Charming oh. doesn't exist, Rene. At least not for us. I was 14 years old. I didn't think it was possible for a boy to look at me and desire me. When he asked me if I wanted to go for a walk, I didn't say anything. I didn't even have the courage to look at him. Things improved for a number of years, then suddenly everything came crashing down. One evening I came home drunk, and the following morning a terrible crisis overcame me all of a sudden. What had I done? I was terrified. I thought I'd lost my sight. The light burned my eyes from inside. The memories of the previous day emerged in bursts, images, flashes, which unleashed something monstrous inside me. Repetition of words was no longer sufficient. Now there was a voice in my head which repeated them louder than I did, and they were words of accusation and blame. So I covered my ears and shouted and hit my head against the wall and threw up. Threw up. I remember the doctor, the wall filthy with blood and vomit. My mother wasn't looking at me. Bruna was crying but trying to hide it. Charlotte was beside me. I never told anyone what had happened. He came to visit me, but I refused to see him. I became agitated. I think he liked me, even though things turned out badly. In that period, I began to suffer from memory loss. The few things I learned didn't please me at all. He told me that I was looking for him. It was all my fault. Bruna told me that sometimes I got drunk. People in the village gossiped about me. Sometimes I was covered in black and blue marks. I didn't realize what was happening to me, what I was doing. I was no longer in control of my life. No. Okay. Well, that's all very interesting, ma'am, but this is an Arby's. Well, I think I was looking out earlier. If I keep sitting on these, I'm trying to get me a lot. Of... 
waiting for my um, McDonald's or Uber to get here. Oh, there goes Google. Oh. There's a lot of rape in this, I'm really realizing that. Poor woman. Under rape, sexual assault. I was the one of this. You know, if I realized this, I would have played something else with it, so I don't I at least have to censor 90% of the stuff. Um, yeah, wait. Come on. Come on, let's look everywhere. She must be here, I'm certain. Back, my goes back to her. Oh. I feel terrible for saying that. That's alright. Keep looking. We mustn't give up. What is this? she be? We've got to talk to her. Everything will be all right. Really but being way. here now, I don't like it. Come on, let's look for her quickly. We can't stay in here too long. They'll find us. I think I'm just gonna censor half that page. That page is there. You know, not talking. I'm trying to look at the third direction. Oh. Okay. Adele, that little girl has been standing motionless in front of the kitchen door for hours. Poor thing, I gave her some candy. She ate it without a word and remained motionless. I don't think she's very well. We used to see her now and again, but now she's always there. I'm going. The doctor's not here. He's coming this afternoon. Try and speak to him. Huh. Oh. Poor thing. Lost in her dreams. She was only a little girl. But nobody gave her a cuddle. They punished her instead. They said she was sick and her dreams were troubling her. They weren't even hers anymore. I need her. But we will find her. We'll find her, won't we? When the water in the shower was cold, we ran away. But when it was hot, then she came to Rene under that cruel white light. I can still feel the shivers her body gave me. Everything must return to how it was. If we recreate that magic, she'll come to us.
I feel like I'm about to do something illegal. Wait. I have a... I don't want to save the power bill here, why is the door closed? What's with your cats meowing? You know what, hold on. Let's take a little break from this real quick. Let's talk to the cats. See what they... Let's see what they want. It's water. I'm sorry, cats. Yeah. Sorry, cats. I didn't realize you guys needed water yet. I'm getting the floor wet. Drop my hot hand real quick. Alright, sorry about that. Um, we'll either cut that out or keep that in because I feel like it. Or either I feel like it or I'm just too... Alright, so it's the first time ever actually using stairs. On the box. Too much anticipation in your room, aren't they? How is a granite table broken like that? Who and how did they do that? I have a story as well. Again. Anytime they would like every once in a while. Would be it's just different though. 
We told them make or tell them how we got there. I didn't tell oh, wasn't my thing. Light. Everyone will look at me, and it's that like, uh. Happening to me. I thought that I would die, and the shame I felt was so deep that an uncontrollable restlessness took over me. I was afraid when other people were nearby. I saw fingers pointed at me, mouths laughing, condemning me. Yeah, that's how I feel. I tried to be alone. I would sit down on the ground and curled up in the dark. I would repeat a word, any word, in continuation. This helped me not to think, not to lose myself. I would spend entire days like this, hoping that my mother would ignore me. Her compassionate words hurt me and terrorized me even more, and so I had to... Shout and shout and shout those words. After a few days, things got better, and little by little, I came out of my hiding place. But the fear was always there, under the surface, ready to strike me even harder. All right. That's fun. All right. There's Everything's a... ready. Let's get undressed and leave our clothes on the hooks in the changing rooms. Sure. Why is it bloody? Or find safe again and make it with me. I'm not that bad. They gave you injections there, which made your body and soul tremble violently. A whirlwind of anguish and unbearable pain. I lived in terror of the next time. They had taken me upstairs to that ward where no one wanted to go. Uh-oh. She's going in the insane room. That's always the biggest uh-oh. I feel like something's changed. This changed. It's just radiology though, that's the issue. No. When there was too much chaos, they closed all the windows and the door. They turned off the lights. And it was pitch black. 
Some people fell asleep. Some others stopped seeing their demons and became more calm. Hi. I'm not gonna lie, Silent Room is I'm gonna, just gonna call it. Hey, well, okay, there's a murder. Isolation. The isolation room. That was the most terrifying thing I think they could have happened. I was never really out fine for it or anything, but. Or I never had to go, but. I didn't want to go, saying. I don't want all the windows open. There's windows. Renee's room in the slightly agitated ward. Slightly agitated. So, I'm not here. I don't know why. Alright. You see, the key difference for this is kind of like... Um... Oh. I said that earlier. Yeah, that's the picture for the game. Like you can't really do anything. No one's gonna really hear you. They tied you to the bed. They tied me to the bed. A woman died next to me, choked by her own vomit. She was tied down because she wouldn't stop pleasuring herself. I can still hear her death rattle. I screamed, but nobody came. Everybody screamed in there, all of them. It was then I saw the doll, which wasn't Charlotte. No, she wasn't Charlotte. That's where I thought I see a man. Or really, anyway, I'm sorry. Ooh. Papa? This is where the. Uh, Coming up on screen. The past came back to hurt me again in the loneliness of that crowded ward. He brought it with him. I thought I would never see him again. He'd come to remind me who I was. That's what my mother used to do. That's what I had done. It seems that my life in here was just a repeat of what it had been outside. The doll. The fear. The shame. I'd have loved to erase everything I did, but instead I always went ahead. And did it again.
Yeah, there was Michael Records and all that. Breeze. Oh, oh yeah. Not exactly how do I get out of here? I don't feel safe. Montefoscoli, November 12th, 1939. My dear daughter, it is with great sadness that I heard what happened. Your transfer and your sufferings are a cause of great worry for me. It will take time, but you'll see. Things will improve. They'll treat you and you'll get better again. I pray a lot, every day. Write to me often, and tell me if you need anything. I promise I'll do what I can. Try to be strong. Mom. This is the last letter she wrote to me. Once I was put into this ward, I was overwhelmed by loneliness. After that medical examination, I received no more letters from Mom. Why is that man here? Why doesn't she come to see me? Did I make a mistake? It didn't seem like she wanted to abandon me. What did I do wrong? I'd like to be able to reply to her again now, to change things. Perhaps she would have listened to me. Will she reply? No, like bite. The letters were sent to the archive. It was their job to post them. Um, I remember my stay there, I was really good at hiding how I felt. So well, they actually gave me seven days off. Uh, 
Oh, how do you hang yourself in here? Oh, I guess the bar windows can help with that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's just straight terrifying. The light often came when I was at school, turning my fellow pupils into puppets that would terrorize me. To me, they appeared transformed, with the bloodied heads of animals stuck where their own heads should have been. I would curl up on the floor and would even wet myself. The teacher would try to console me and would smile at me, but... Oh, okay, I'm going to go back to that. It was more or less in the same period that I became friends with Bruna. <clears throat> I remember the sensation of joy I experienced when I felt almost normal. The light isn't coming. The dreams have gone. And I have a real friend. One who speaks to me. I would repeat this to myself proudly while looking in the mirror, where I no longer saw an embarrassing... It seemed to me that the world was a difficult place, but was no longer impossible. Bruna. I did not understand what Bruna saw in me, especially as she was almost two years older than me. I would tell her this every now and then, and she would joke about it, saying, Nothing. I don't see anything in you, which is what I like about you. And then she would hug me. Right? When you were sent to a lunatic oh, asylum, I found it. you lost the right to possess anything. Everything you arrived with was mm -hmm. packed up and stored here. Even the clothes you were wearing. In case you were released one day. But far too many never left. There must be a file with my name in the filing cabinet somewhere. There must be a file with my name in the filing cabinet somewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I need to some oh, there he goes. Dear mother, yep. please, I beg you, get me out of this place. I'm so frightened here. You were right. I know I was wrong. I understand. I'm so ashamed. If only you knew how much. But now I'll behave myself, I promise. Now things will be fine. I'll work hard. I'll be very good. Your daughter, Renee. This letter. It was Renee's letter. Just as she wrote it back then. But it was never sent. Why? Why did this happen? I received your letter, Mom. You tell me to be patient and strong. 
while I only feel fear and pain. And you don't write to me anymore. If only these words could be my soul, I'd tell you what was happening to me. The kids want to kill me. They all look the other way and tell me what to do. I don't understand. She helps me, but what have they done to her? Can you tell me? Will you help me? Renee. Montefoscoli, July 7th, 1940. My dear daughter, I have received no news from you. You have not contacted me in months. I'm sorry, but I don't have the money to come and visit you. Do you remember Mr. Onofrio? He'll soon be in Volterra for business. I've asked him if he would be kind enough to ask the director for some news about you. I hope he'll bring me some good news when he returns. But please write to me. I know that I was strict with you. You have to forgive me. I didn't think. I've given Mr. Onofrio a new doll for you. You told me that you lost yours, and I know you loved it so much. It's not as nice as your Charlotte, but I hope that it will comfort you nonetheless. Keep your chin up, darling. Everything will be fine, you'll see. Mom. Oh, oh come on. Oh, this is going to be a long video. October 12th, 1940. My dear daughter, I've written two letters to you and have received no reply. Every day, I'm anxiously waiting for a letter. Mr. Onofrio's back. He brought you the doll. Do you like it? He told me he was unable to speak to the director, but managed to see you. I pray for you every day. Even Don Gino said a prayer for you during Sunday Mass. Isn't that nice? I've made up my mind, Rene. I'm bringing you home. I've already written to the director. I told him that I'll take care of you. I'm not very well at the moment and can't work, but I'll get better soon, you'll see. And as soon as I can make the journey, I'll come and fetch you. I know you're suffering a lot. But please be strong, I beg you. Mom will come and fetch us, won't she? Mom is good, but she's not well. That's why that man came. She also sent us the doll. I could have played with it and talked to it while waiting for her to come, but Renee didn't bring it with her. Perhaps she's been abducted like all the others and is locked up here somewhere. Oh. Alright, well... I want to see if it... Are you kidding me? Is it seriously the last chapter? It's five in the morning! I don't want to edit all this! The amount of... You know what? <sighs> but Renee 10, 20 minutes later. ish later, I'm back here. Perhaps I just wanted to like, tell my friend like come online. You might bother me. Up here somewhere. Let's look for the second doll. It'll be among the bundles oh. of the patient's belongings. Now we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. You see? Mom was good. I was bad. Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. We did? Let's We're... look for Charlotte. 
We have abandoned her. We did? Will she still be where we abandoned her? Under the warm lights? She better be. I'm scared. I hope not. Oh my god. Oh, I thought she moved. Fucking bitch. Starting up a party. I'm gonna finish up this chat. I walked my way home from school and I got put in a wheelchair. I run insane way too much. This might be both a day later, honestly. I don't know. Wait a minute, who's the one ki- Ah! I, I, no, no, no! Wait, 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 wait! No, 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 no! Ah, 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 I can feel that. I didn't, I didn't do, do anything. anything. I just obeyed I orders. I only obeyed orders. Sure, you just got away. away. Mom I will didn't come and get me. She loves us. I only even though we're orders. Leave us alone. I'm gonna come. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Mom has come and get us I down. I didn't do anything. She I only us. obeyed she orders. Us, even though we're bad. Mom won't leave us alone. I didn't do anything. Charlotte gone away. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us now. She loves us, even though we're bad. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Bro, why does this man have to ask for R6 when I've already done deleted? What are they gonna do? No, no, no. no. that doctor writing, sitting at his desk. <laughs> September 
September 7th, 1938. The patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all kinds of other filth. Crazed, she hears voices that order her to do things. She says she heard children singing and that they were locked up in a school. January 20th, 1939. Introverted, dazed, cannot focus on anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. June 1st. Apathetic. Eats very little. She refuses to be touched. Does not respond. Spends her time in the grounds. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens. October 14th. Return of impulsive behavior. This morning she asked for two eggs to make tzabayoni, but when she got them, she threw them up in the air. Excited, clamorous, slightly confused, takes her clothes off. December 8th. Tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words. Laughs hysterically and pleasures herself. The nurses report that about two weeks ago she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They said that when they took her away, she swore at them and then lashed out and bit them. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. They've kept her tied to the bed since then. Transferred to the slightly agitated ward from the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. I was with Amara in the showers my memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? December 15th, Dr. C. Patient notes. The abnormality of her psychic state has induced are her we to lose a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. A fickle and flighty character, she regularly discards her household duties and engages in occasional prostitution. Delinquency? Prostitution? Renee? It seems so strange, unreal. It can't be true. And Amara? She loved us and would tell us everything. She wouldn't hide anything from us. Her mental deficiency makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and hysterical. Treated with cardiazol, two injections a week for five weeks. They were only trying to confuse us with the therapy, and my god, they succeeded. It was as if they wanted to instill the madness into us. June 2nd. After a long period of calm and improvement, it really does feel like with the psych ward. And they're not there. It, now there, it doesn't feel like they're trying to help. She swears and curses. They're just there. They're like, flailing her arms and hitting yeah, them. Whatever off of it. According to reports by Dr. B, the patient has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago, in her third month of pregnancy. Conception occurred after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital grounds. Details are contained in the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes. ES Therapy that's how the reality is concealed. It has all been planned very carefully. June 13th. The nurses report that she descended into a state of great mental confusion after receiving her mother's letter. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious and then punched a nurse. 
impulsive, flails about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her, lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence to give the patient no further reason to become agitated. August 20th, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient is extremely agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Two days later, she is still shouting all the time that he commands her, that she must obey and harm herself, and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed, and intensification of ES therapy until we achieve results. No contact with the outside. That way, nobody knew what was happening within these walls. She really is mental. Calm down. You must be calm. Don't get agitated. We'll make you calm down. Is that the only thing that matters? Is tranquility worth the price of not living? March 3rd. Alert. Correct attitude replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Did I imagine Amara? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. Schizophrenia! <laughs> she must have left some traces of her presence. We can try to find her medical records in the archive where their letters were filed. Oh look, there's the big brain over here who called uh, schizophrenia. Hold on, I'm gonna let's turn something up real quick. I gotta do something real quick. Amara B. Aged 32, housewife, mother of two daughters, married to Mario B. Mario! So Mara does exist, yet she had no children and wasn't married, but that photo, it's her. June 3rd, 1936. Admitted yesterday, showing signs of improvement. June 8th. Cheerful, calm, and tranquil. Her behavior is good and she's keeping herself clean and tidy. Discharged on June 10th, April 28th, 1937, arrived accompanied by her husband in an anxious and nervous state. Has difficulty speaking, trembles. Discharged May 14th, March 8th, 1938. A few days before Renee was admitted, she told me that she too had been admitted only a short time previously. Arrived yesterday in a febrile state. Discharged March 14th. She didn't leave. Certainly not after a few days. No. June 22, 1939. Readmitted once more. The patient shows rapid improvement. Discharged July 2nd. August 1st, 1941. The latest of many admissions due to agitation. Discharged August 27th. She came and went. Stayed only for short periods. But I remember she was always with me. What's going on? March 4th, 1942. Back again, the same situation. March 8th. Compared to previous admissions, the patient seems depressed even after a few days, although her demeanor is calm and she is attentive. Discharged March 25th. April 2nd. 
The patient is distracted and apathetic. Her husband brought her here and said, She's not eating, doctor. She spends all her time sleeping. I'm so worried, doctor. You know her. You can help her. April 6th. Tuberculosis. Patient transferred to the Maragliano Pavilion and is in isolation. May 3rd, 1942. Death from tuberculosis at approximately 8.30 a.m. Is Amara dead? Poor dear friend, I wasn't even able to say goodbye to you. Enclosed is a manuscript written by the patient, probably in a state of delirium. I'm dying, I know it. I'm losing a lot of blood, bleeding internally too. It's strange, since I came back in here, I can't stop thinking about that little girl with her sad eyes, her desperation. I only saw her for a short time, it's true, but she remains in my heart. Will she still be here? I hope to God not. I hope she's better and her mother's taken her home. But my memories don't match up. What's the point of this? Perhaps my memory is playing tricks on me. Things are not as I remember them, as I see them. But she said she liked me. I just can't understand it. I just wanted to say goodbye to her for the last time. I never even said goodbye to her. Oh. How could a soul survive in this hell? I saw one to feel things again. Pain, passion. Feel the damn tears rolling down my face to remember that I was alive. Depression. What I have.